People are asking me, how could George Bush be prosecuted for murder when he didn't personally kill anyone? Of course, the answer is that you don't have to personally kill someone if you're a criminal defendant to be guilty of murder. Charles Manson, you know about him. I convicted him of the seven Tate Law Bianca murders, even though he didn't phys physically participate in the murders. He wasn't even present at the murder scene. I was able to convict Manson because of the vicarious liability rule of conspiracy, which provides that each conspirator is criminally responsible for all crimes committed by his co-conspirators, as well as innocent agents of those conspirators to further the object of the conspiracy, e.g., uh, a and B conspire to commit a bank robbery, and A is the uh, driver of the getaway car. B is a stick-up guy. He goes in. The teller resists, and uh, B kills the teller. A, sitting down in his car, is guilty of that murder, even though he only conspired to commit robbery. Why? Because B murdered the teller to further the object of the conspiracy. That's the law of the land. But, one might say, since even Bush's co-conspirators, like Cheney, and Condoleezza Rice did not kill the victims who would be named in the criminal indictment in this case, the 4,000 American soldiers who have died so far in Iraq. Iraqi soldiers and civilian insurgents did. How could he be guilty of murder? The reason is that if a conspirator, or anyone for that matter, deliberately sets in motion a chain of events which he knows will cause, that's the key word, will cause a third party innocent agent to commit an act the defendant is criminally responsible for that act. Bush, in invading Iraq, caused Iraqis to kill American soldiers in much the same fashion that a person causes a gun to fire a bullet that kills someone by pulling the trigger. In fact, in the criminal law, innocent agents are referred to as mere instruments of the defendant. For George Bush to say that he's not responsible at all for the killings in this case would almost be the same as a conspirator arguing, my co-conspirator never killed the victim, his gun did. Here we all know that the object of Bush, Cheney, and Rice was to go to war in Iraq, which they knew would inevitably result in American soldiers dying, unless Bush wants to make the argument, which would be rejected completely out of hand, that he was planning some type of war, of a war, without casualties. <laughs> and as the courts have said, quote, the doctrine of innocent agent allows a defendant not present at the commission of a crime, here are the killings in Iraq, to be convicted as a principal in the first degree if the defendant engaged in actions which caused, there's that word caused again, which caused the actual perpetrator to do the act as an innocent agent of the defendant. Note that it does not have to be shown that the principal wanted the innocent agent to commit the act, only that he caused him to. And certainly in invading Iraq, Bush caused Iraqis either in self-defense or to repel an invader to fight back. Let me tell you what the main legal overriding issue would be at Bush's trial if he were ever prosecuted. The main issue would be whether or not George Bush went to war, as he has always claimed, in self-defense, his so-called preemptive strike. Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, allegedly so. Therefore, he was an imminent threat to security of this country, so Bush had a strike first in self-defense. If the war was not in self-defense, but one that the prosecutor could prove Bush took us to under false pretenses, then all of the killings of American soldiers in Iraq become unlawful killings, and therefore murder. Let me give you some of the main pieces of evidence against Bush showing he took this nation to war under false pretenses. As, and as I discuss some of this evidence, you might be very interested to know, I think you are going to be interested to know, that this is the same evidence that prompted a very conservative Southern Republican congressman who's got a conscience, he voted for the war, one of the most vocal supporters of the war called me at my home two, two Mondays ago, June 16th, and said, Mr. Bogliosi, I've listened to the audio tape of your book. And I can tell you that I'm convinced now that George Bush misled, deliberately misled Congress into war. I've already given several copies of the book to colleagues in Congress, and I'm, I'm telling them, you, we've been lied to, read the book. And he said, early on next month, he's going to be calling me. He wants a conference call between me and him and several other people to decide where to go from here. But this is a very, very conservative Republican Southern um, congressman.
It's humid tonight. Who is it? <laughs> um, I'm not sure that he would want me to release his name right now. He would? No, I, I'm not sure. I think he's running for uh, re-election, but I can tell you he's talking about it on the Hill. I just heard a couple days ago he's passing out additional books on the Hill. Whether he wants me to say it publicly, I don't know, but I will eventually ask him flat out, can I mention his name? In George Bush's first speech to the nation on Hussein in Iraq, October 7, 2002, Cincinnati, Ohio, Bush told Americans that, George, that uh, Saddam Hussein was a, great was a great danger to this nation, either by his attacking us with so-called weapons of mass destruction or by giving these weapons to a terrorist group to attack us. And Bush said that this attack could happen, quote, on any given day, unquote, meaning what? That the threat was imminent. The only big problem for George Bush is that on October the 1st, six days earlier, the CIA sent Bush its 2002 National Intelligence Estimate, a classified top secret report that represented the uh, opinion, the consensus opinion, of all 16 U.S. federal intelligence agencies on the issue of whether or not Hussein was an imminent threat to the security of this country. And on page 8 of that 91-page report, it clearly and unequivocally says, and by the way, what I'm about to tell you, to my knowledge, has never been, never been said or never been written or never appeared in any major newspaper or magazine in America. Page 8 clearly says that Hussein was not an imminent threat to the security of this country, that he'd only be a threat if he feared that we were about to attack him. In other words, he'd only be a threat if he was forced to fight in self-defense. So we know then, not think, but know, that when George Bush told the nation on the evening of October the 7th, Cincinnati, Ohio, that Saddam Hussein was an imminent threat to the security of this country, he was telling millions of unsuspecting Americans the exact opposite of what his own CIA was telling him. Now, if we had nothing else at all, and there's so much more, that alone shows what? That George Bush took this nation to war on a terrible, terrible lie. And there... And therefore, all the killings of American soldiers in Iraq became unlawful killings and therefore murder. But it gets worse. It gets worse. October 4th, three days later, Bush and his people had the CIA release an unclassified summary version of the October 1st classified report so this October 4th unclassified version could be released to the American public and to Congress. This unclassified version came to be known as the White Paper. And in this White Paper that was shown to the American people and to Congress, and which contained the opinion of 16 U.S. intelligence agencies that Hussein was not an imminent threat to the security of this country, that conclusion was completely deleted, completely eliminated. Every single one of these all-important words, the most important conclusion in that classified document was completely deleted from the white paper. And the question I have of you is how evil, how perverse, how sick, how criminal, can George Bush and his people be? And yet, unbelievably, and there's no other word for it, up to this point, they've gotten away with all of that, with all of this. And 100,000 minimum precious human beings are in their cold graves right now as I am talking to you because of it. 